Shalom everyone. Welcome to Elevix 5th Monthly Connect. As you know, these sessions were created to spark action and connect Elevix ecosystem. Today we're joined by a live audience. We love having people here because you have the opportunity to ask questions. Feel free to use the chat to ask any questions that you may have of our subject matter expert. And we also like to share opportunities at the end after our session with our special invitee. We also share opportunities that are available that you may be able to take advantage of. I know that some of you have been able to take that uh, information and apply to certain fellowships and that has opened new opportunities for you. So we definitely want to continue to do the same for others. And um, the topic of today episode, it's very, very relevant, especially during this time of the year where majority of corporations are looking to finalize their projects from a finance perspective. They're trying to close the books and there's a lot happening between the holidays and family and responsibilities. We all have several responsibilities in our life, whether it's working full time, whether as a mom, whether as a student or a combination of all of those things. And sometimes we also hold uh, other roles outside of our day to day, like board roles, which require us to be present and to be active in different committees. So the topic of today is time management skills for success. Um, and one of the reasons why this topic is also very relevant is when we're looking at um, mental health, when we're looking at balancing our well-being, the more um, efficient and effective that we are in our time management skills can actually help avoid stress which ultimately has a powerful effect on the quality of the decisions that we make and also aspects of our lives, like our career progression, our relationships, our friendships, our social life, because then we're not necessarily giving up time on one of those areas to support the other. So today, um, our subject matter expert is a very dear friend of the Elevink ecosystem, Dr. Melissa Baralt. She is a mentor of our ecosystem, so she's very familiar with our program, with the cohort, the way that we manage our sessions, and she has actively participated and met with some of you in the past. But let me tell you a little bit about who she is. Uh, she's a mod motivator with a desire to make people learn. Her main motives are to engage and purposefully help others find their path. She works hard to maintain relationships and cultivate the lives of many. She's a professor and an educator. She's a mentor. She's a motivational speaker. She's an entrepreneur. She's a community activist for the city of Patterson, New Jersey. And she looks for opportunities to help individuals maximize their full potential. It's been the most rewarding for her to serve and positively affect the educational outcomes of her city and her state and she looks to motivate and engage young minds so that they can too be better than her i know this statement is be better than you but uh, i feel like you know i will apply it to you so welcome dr Boral. we are very excited to have you here and we always like to start with the same type of question please tell us a little bit about melissa Tell us a little bit about your background, your career path. How did you select your career? Allow us the opportunity to get to know you better from a personal level before we actually go into the topic. Absolutely. Claudia, thank you for having me. Hermana, you are wonderful. And thank you for always being on top of everything with Ella Vink. You are appreciated. And this is a wonderful opportunity for everyone on the call. Some of you I know, some of you I don't. And if I don't know you, hello and welcome to the Melissa Extravaganza. Uh, uh, my name is Dr. Melissa Brawl. I'm so happy to be here. And I am the lucky daughter of Dominican immigrant parents who uh, started their trajectory in Washington Heights in New York. The Heights, not like the play in the movie, but that's exactly where I grew up and later ended up in New Jersey. Um, and I always like to tell people when they ask me, well, how did you end up where you end up, where you ended up? And I always like to tell people, and I know it sounds like almost like um, cliche, but it's not. And I, and I don't know if you guys believe in this, but the power of prayer. 
right? So, you know, I have family that that always prayed for better outcomes for me. And, and, and I still believe that the prayers of my grandmother are the ones that are holding me strong today. Um, so, you know, I ended up in New Jersey, transitioning in New Jersey. And then I ended up wanting to do biology. Originally, I was gonna go to med school. And I ended up wanting to do biology. And I ended up looking at people that were in the state school that I went to, which is Montclair State University. Shout out to anybody from MSU. And I went to Montclair State University and I looked at um, one of the programs that helped minorities develop into medical doctors. And something didn't fit right with the program and the way that it was being pitched. I said, you know, I, something's not, something's off. Something's off. I need to do my own thing and I need to find out what that is. And I had this old lady that was my sweetheart, my little old, you know, department chair. She was an old Jewish young woman named uh, Dr. Lustigman, Dr. Bonnie Lustigman, who recommended me for a Bridges program for minorities in the sciences. And the deal was you got to go to school, you got your tuition paid for, and everything was free and you got a salary. You just had to maintain a GPA. So that was the beginning of my trajectory in the sciences. And that allowed me to bridge from a master's program all the way to a doctoral program. And I didn't realize the power of what I had done at such a young age because my parents had always instilled in me the fact that I had to go to school and I had to terminal, terminal, right? So I didn't think it was a big deal. I just kept going to school and I went so far out and I was done. I remember being done at like 27 with this big degree and looking to the sides and realizing that no one next to me looked like me. And I don't know if that's happened to you guys in your professional life. The higher up you go, the less and less people look like you. You know, at the C level, people who are making decisions at those companies. And so you're like, wait a minute, I really accomplished something now. Now we gotta make it work. And so I decided to dedicate my life to teaching and to really help people find their way because I, if it wasn't for Dr. Lustigman or people that I had around the way, um, along the way, my trajectory would have been completely different and God knows where I would have been. But I believe that we're all in this together for a purpose. We're all in this together for a reason and we're all in this together for a season. Everyone serves a purpose and everyone has talent. And so for me, the power of prayer is what got me here and my parents are still like, now, you know, they switch from parents to grandparents. Now their role is completely different. So I'm a mom of two. So among all the things that I do and all the boards that I serve on and all the jobs that I have, which is absolutely crazy, but we do time management and we maneuver it all. I'm a mom. And so for me, that's that's the importance of doing what I do because it's important for my boys to see me do what I do, help other people, and then extend that olive branch to the people that they're around as well and learn that we can only help each other once we help each other up. So I am very excited to be here. Um, that is just me in a nutshell. I'm always in a excited mood, um, just always all the time. I'm a live wire. Um, Dolly knows because she's seen me already. And um, I'm just always happy. I think people follow good energy and they really know when you mean it and when you're sincere about your intentions. Well, thank you, because I didn't even know all of that about you. So this was a great introduction and very inspirational for us to know, right? Every day when we have the opportunity to listen to this type of stories, we just keep reminding ourselves that we need to trust on our potential. We need to trust on the opportunities and we have to listen to our gut sometimes in regards of what is right and what it's not. So, so thank you for sharing uh, your story. So tell us a little bit about what is time management? I know that when I was doing a little bit of research and preparation for our meeting, you know, there were a few things that came across like prioritization of the task, limiting distractions, managing deadlines, balancing work and personal life. But you're an expert on this and I know you've taught classes around this. So how will you categorize it and how should we as professionals be thinking about time management for success? Well, you know, I always tell people, and this is an interesting point of view, but I want to take you guys out of your normal comfort zone and make you break the molds that society teaches you, right? Society teaches you what is success, right? It depends on the scale that you're using for success, right? 
Because for me, a successful day is a day that I can do all my meetings, do my work, come home, cook dinner, and do homework with my kids. That was a success for me in a day, right? For other people, a success is, listen, I went out and I made $200 today. That's a successful day, right? How do you measure success? So it, it's independent and everyone has different needs and everyone also has different things that they want to accomplish. But there's certain myths about time management and the word in itself, people are scared. Time management, oh, I don't have time, right? Can we do X, Y, Z? I, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. I'm not doing that today. There's no time. And, and there's myths. And let, let's tackle down some of these myths before we truly define what it is. You know, one of the myths is that, you know, it takes the fun out of life if you're time managed. Like, you can't do anything because you're on a clock. Or, you know, I work better under pressure. I hear people say that all the time. I work better under pressure or no matter what I do, I just don't have enough time. And those are all myths because we find that, and especially people that, you know, are experts in the field. Um, and I'm not per se an expert on time management, but I've just been in higher education for so long and mentoring people that I can, you know, I've been able to manage people and help them find their time management niche, whatever works for them, right? And I would say that with your, if you do good time management, it increases productivity and it helps you reduce stress. It'll increase your self-esteem. It'll help you achieve a balance, your self-confidence, and it just helps you reach your goals. So much so that it's not so much about the goals, but rather the system that you have in place to achieve those goals. Because if someone is lazy or if someone is a slob, let's say, right? Oh, this person doesn't clean, this person's a slob, and their goal is, I wanna clean my room but they clean their room one day, right? It's for the moment. And then two days later, the room is messed up again. Then you re really didn't do, you know, you, you accomplished the goal, but did you really prioritize what needed to get done? And did you really tackle the task as it should have been tackled? So I think it's a matter of prioritizing what is important, right? What is important? What is going to get you to your next level, right? What is a time waster and identifying what your individual time wasters are, right? And by time wasters, you already know what I mean. These are things that we do. You get on, you don't realize you're on, you don't realize you're doing it. And next thing you know, four hours later, you're still doing it. That to me is a time waster. And you know, things like social media, things like Netflix, you know, things that get in the way of progress. I'm not telling you to become this, you know, this perfectionist and not look at Netflix or social media, but lady gave me the look, the side eye, I see you lady. Um, you know, it's the truth. We get on that social media and we just forget and we just scroll, 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 right? And we just, we just forget. I, I like, find, and, um, if I can, I am laughing because listening to you is like listening to my husband talking to our kids. And his thing is always about social media and, I find that when I take a hiatus from social media, if I just log off, I'm much more productive throughout the day. That's like Absolutely. my time waster. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and identify, that's excellent. Identify what's your time waster, right? So you set goals, set reasonable expe expectations, make a schedule, and then revise and revisit your plan. So the number one thing that I would like to say is that time management is all about the plan. Right, so you have to have a plan in place. You have to have a schedule in place. I mean, not to the T where it's like, I'm eating at 6.30, it is now 6.35, we're behind the schedule. But know that you have things to do and kind of, you know, focus around what you have to do. So if anybody follows me on social media, and I know Claudia follows me on social media, I think Dolly does. I'm like everywhere all the time. And the reason I'm able to do that is because I literally have a schedule where I'm like, okay, four o'clock, we're doing this, five o'clock, we're doing this. Six, even if it's back to back, but you're able to plan and you're able to really prioritize the things that are gonna take you to the next level. So right now, Elevink lines up with what I'm trying to do in my next level, right? And I believe in the mission of Elevink. So everything they, you know, Claudia says to me, hey, do whatever. Absolutely, no questions asked. And that's because I know that that's a priority for me, right? So, you know, setting reasonable expectations. You know, a lot of people think, well, if you manage your time better, you'll do better. Yeah, you can manage your time better. You can plan better, but set reasonable goals too, right? Be, be reasonable with yourself. You know, I like the people that say, 
I'm going to try to read more. I'm going to try to read more. I'm just going to try to read more. And they say, I'm going to read 10 books in one week. And then they don't accomplish the 10 books in one week. And what do you think happens to people when that happens? What do you think happens to people? You feel awful. You feel awful. You're like, look, it, it's it's crazy. And it's the little subtle things, little things. If you do good, 1% good every day in a year, if you increase 1% productivity, that's 365%. By the end of next year, you're going to be a different person. And I'd like to challenge all of you to update your, your reading. Um, I, I want to recommend a book, Claudia, if I can. Um, this is a book that I'm reading right now. Hold on, I have the blur thing, but I don't know if you can see it. Can you see can. it? Hold on, let me take the blur thing off. But it's called Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits. Um, it is a wonderful, wonderful book that I am just finding the best experience reading this book. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but in this book, he talks about the importance of having a system and the importance of, you know, attaining things that help you manage a goal that you want, things that'll help you change the environment to achieve that goal and things that'll help you acquire and move on to the next thing, right? A lot of times we try to do things but we go back to the same environment. And so if you go back to the same environment and you don't change the, you know, like I said, the system around it, then it's really difficult and you get discouraged, like Dali said, and you turn off. And so I always tell people, oh, motivated, stay motivated. But, uh, but motivation is temporary, right? Motivation is temporary because motivation is like, I'm going to stay motivated until I get this, until I do this, right? Until I. And I'm telling you that the way you stay energetic and the way you stay energized and motivated, right, within your cycle is to have a system, a system that works for you. Everybody's independent, right? Oh, somebody dropped it on the podcast. Absolutely. James Clear. Beautiful book. I mean, you should check it out. Um, so, you know, those are things that I like to focus on. I like to focus on, you know, having a plan and, and knowing that I want to go from point A to point B and that there's things in between and that sometimes... Guess what? We're in what month are we in? November. That means sometimes you gotta say no in November. November, right? No. And that's huge. That's huge. Saying no in order to make priority for your time and your system and what you gotta go in place. Sometimes the answer is no. <laughs> right? Yes, and that's hard for us to do as Latina women. You know, we normally want to become this, you know, super powered individuals. We want to make sure that we're doing everything. And it's hard for us to say no, but it's part of being successful. It's part of prioritizing. It's part of, like you said, ensuring that the activities that we're doing are aligned with our, you know, higher purpose or with the next step. So thank you for sharing that and, and encouraging us to think about it that way. So you've been working with students and professionals for many years. What are some of the most common pitfalls, mistakes people make regarding time management? I think you alluded to some like Netflix, social media, but is there anything else that stands out that you want to share with this group? You know, one thing is avoid the temptation to socialize and do things that can take you away from your goal when you're scheduled to do work, right? If your friends ask you to join last minute, come on, let's go out to dinner. Let's just do that or whatever. You have a deadline. You have to do what you have to do, right? Not looking like, hey, if I do one little drink, I'll be fine. Because that, then you go down a slippery slope, right? And it starts, it's the beginning of bad things, right? You know, if you're going to focus on something, let's say you have to study for an exam or whatever it is, make sure you're in a place where there's no interruptions and then you won't be tempted to use this here, right? Going on social media hiatuses, for a bit, right? I have a friend that she's an accountant and she goes on these social media hiatuses. She's like, no one, she's, you can't find her anywhere. And she's just like, I needed a cleanse. And I understand what she means by that, right? Because sometimes we are so charged and negatively pushed by the things we see every day on social media. And it really helps us to um, kind of shift the focus of what we should be focusing on, right? Text are a major distraction. I mean, there's people, especially the young folks that I look at, you know, they're just like always texting. It's like, it's almost like they're not even, they're so digital, you know, millennials, especially very digital. There's no response system. And we have to be careful with that. Right. So, you know, one advice or one thing that I say is that 
a pitfall is that people don't take notes anymore or they don't write down things, right? And I think writing down notes or making a note, even if it's on your cell phone, is so essential to time management because sometimes somebody will say something during the day and then you won't remember it. If you never wrote it down, you lose it, right? Like, oh, I need to do this at five. Write it down, I need to do this at five. You know, even if it's a note, a reminder, an alarm, but always write. I always write wherever I go. Like I'm always, I have like 75 notebooks where I just open and write stuff. Um, writing things down does something to your brain, you know, cause you're putting it to your hand, your hand and paper. And it does something to your brain when you write it and you remember it, you retain it. And then you're able to say it back because you remember what you wrote on that piece of paper. It's really amazing and remarkable. We're writing something as simple as writing stuff down. People don't write stuff down because we are in the digital age. If you're not digital, if you're not handwriting and that's not your thing, I always do this too. And I tell my students to do this is open your phone and make a voice note. Sometimes making a voice note is so helpful. Just making a voice note saying, hey, Melissa, remember da 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 and talk to yourself on a voice note. That's huge. But just having that reminder, that ability to go back and revisit things when you don't remember it or you don't have um, the capacity to, to, to ensure during the day that you're going to remember things. And that's a pitfall. A lot of people don't do that. They don't do that. They don't write and they don't plan their day or their week. So I try to sit down on Sunday nights. I don't know if Claudia does this too, but I do Sunday nights and I try to visit my entire week. What is there to do? I go through my email, what meetings do I have? What kind of things? Cause I literally have five to six different events a day during the week. And it's, it can get convoluted, but I would argue that, you know, my, my biggest thing here besides the time management um, and getting it done, my biggest thing is my husband because he helps out with the kids and I couldn't do it if I didn't have a good partner and didn't have the communication with a good partner to do that and be able to pull that off. So we have to think about things like that as well. It's difficult when you're by yourself and you're not having you know, the communication or the skills or the right kind of partner to help you achieve your dream, right? So choose wisely. Time, choose wisely. Chores, choose wisely. Tasks, choose wisely. Goals, choose wisely. Partners, choose wisely. Exactly. Well, well, thank you. And and I think that I do the writing. I always carry with me a notebook and I'm always writing because like you, I go back to back meetings and the only way that I can write down the critical things and takeaways, I am, you know, after in the afternoon, I can go back and then do my to do list for the next day and, acquire, you know, finish what I needed to do for that day. And I do, don't do Sundays. I normally do Friday afternoons because Mondays it's elevating day right so normally during the weekends it's planning for elevate to be able to deliver so friday it's like the look forward of the week but everybody has to have a, a method that works for them based on their schedule right but, and you're right looking at what uh, activities and what commitments we have allows us to reprioritize if needed so just to get fi to finalize our topics is there any, I mean, you already mentioned a few things, but are there any three to five immediate tips, actions that anyone that is listening to this can do to improve their personal time management to become more active and successful? Absolutely. Number one, stop multitasking. Because we're women, we're Latinos. You know what I'm saying? We are, right? So the first thing, I can do six things at once. And yeah, that could work, right, for a second. But what happens is when you're multitasking, you never finish one thing to its full completion, right? Or you're not focused on what you're doing at a task, one task at a time. But we're taught, society teaches us that as women, oh, you can do it all. You can cook, clean, be on the phone, planchal. Everybody does that, right? And I'm telling you, if you want to maximize the potential of your energy, of your worth, of your intelligence, of your patience, of your best work, not to do that, right? That's a tip set deadlines look i have a deadline i need to do this by x amount of days claudia's helping you that because she's telling you these are the days we have phone calls these are the days that you know i need to do something right or not um and thank you dolly for that task stacking right so he talks about that in this book and he talks about like if you have a cup of coffee every morning then tag a goal or a task to that cup of coffee when i drink my coffee 
I'm gonna get up and do 20 push-ups when I'm done or whatever it is, right? You, you kind of combine the tasks together so that you can get them done. Uh, remove distractions. Maybe the distraction is in your phone. Maybe it's your house is noisy and you can't get stuff done. We all through the COVID pandemic had to stay home and we had to learn how to work from home. And it was a disaster for some people. It was an absolute shock. I know for me, it was a disaster. I have two young kids. So I had a kid in kindergarten and a kid in second grade while I'm doing three classes in college and two at the state school. All at the same time, a synchronous time, everybody meeting at the same time. I mean, it, it, it got really difficult and you had to learn that, you know, I'm, my environment was really affecting and my kids were affected in the way we were doing things, right? Set reminders, you know, brain bump your thoughts, decline additional commitments. If you know you have something to do on the 18th, you probably shouldn't go to your cousin's baby shower. You're not gonna make it to that one. You're not gonna make it. And you have to be realistic with yourself, right? And one thing that I always tell, especially my Latino students, is to learn the importance of delegating tasks, right? So maybe you don't have to do everything yourself. There are people in your home or in your family or friends that can help you complete some of your tasks. And we have to learn to delegate, right? Or ask for help when you're not able to do whatever it is, X, Y, Z. Let's ask for help. Let's normalize asking for help because you don't know everything. You don't have the answer to everything. And we're always learning, right? Get inspired and get out there and be energetic and set up your system so that no matter what the, no matter what the outcome you always win thank you and accepting the help right because sometimes we don't need to delegate sometimes people offer to do something and we tend to say like oh no don't worry about it thank you so much right instead of just saying no thank you i appreciate that and let them come forward with whatever they are willing to offer right that that's another thing that that we Correct. should thinking about so thank you so much this was extremely informational very helpful for us to get to know you from a personal level but also get to hear some of the things that have worked for you for your students and things that we can start applying so thank you so much for joining us to elevate connect number five and be on the lookout for our december um session thank you <laughs>